Hi friends, welcome back. So, as I said, I strung my basic diff. I am going to do three to one strand. Okay, three strands in the middle and one strand on the sides. 0.545 millimeter thickness, and um, I have strung here my pattern first, and then I will show you guys this what I did. So here we go. So I followed this pattern. This is the pattern which I liked. So I am just taking it from the box plus whatever I like. So first is this bead which is say this one right here. Check glass roundel, swirl roundel. And then I put a um, copper spacer bead and then let me just zoom in a little bit more so i can show you guys what i did so the swirl bead then a um, copper spacer and then this round L. these are check glass fire polish facetted heishi heishi uh, creme brulee one six by three millimeter i added that and then i added a spacer again this is probably four by two millimeter or three millimeter i guess and then i added this bead right here we received four of these beads i'm using four in this pack in this necklace then i added a copper bead this is a big one probably a 10 or 8 millimeter then a daisy spacer okay and then this orange bead then i repeated the same pattern so as you can see okay let me just okay this is the pattern i did on both sides okay so I just separated the beads with some spacer beads and daisy spacer and I want to highlight this orange color that's why I added that coppery um, um, Tibetan beads and then I continued that then what I did was I added a crimp to crimp bead as you can see these are number one beetle on crimp I added a crimp bead let me show you guys how the beetle on crimp works normally i use another crimp but for this project i use the beetle on crimp so it comes like this the crimp tubes come like this and i have four of them this is a bigger size but i used this one right here number one crimp okay this is the one i used in this project so just because I don't want to use the crimp um, tube or the regular ones that I usually use because I don't have that in copper color one and the next the second factor is I want this to be sturdy enough um, you guys will understand what I mean by that in a while but I added the crimp tube after this uh, section of beads that I added this is the focal it is going to be the same the other side as well then I added a crimp bead and then a big uh, spacer bead a spacer bead which has a bigger hole as you can see this one has a big hole because I wanted to hide my crimp underneath that so I added that okay and then again I started adding these beads so these beads are these are I think one millimeter copper uh, spacer bead which I got from bbcraft.com and um, a while ago so I added this these carnelian beads separated by this copper beads so this one has a gradient effect as you can see the end is a darker one and we have darker beads in the middle it's lighter so the same way and then what I did was I added again a crimp tube and this spacer with a big hole and then continued the same pattern again just like so so I did this in on both sides okay this is what I have so far I'm sure we have to add more here um, but we do we will do that later but first let's just measure how much we have here so so this is 12 plus 2 probably let's see 
13 inches is all I have 13 point something 13.5 or so inches I have we need at least um, say 18 inches per se we can add a chain in the back to actually extend this necklace we can add some chain in the back but we need at least 18 inches for this so if we have 13 inches we need five more inches we can which we can do three inches easily on the side uh, that should not be a problem but I am looking at 20 inch um, over here or there so uh, 13 inches so we need some seven or eight inches that's fine so first we will tackle the necklace uh, the center part of the necklace okay so it's a little bit different uh, and as I said I this is my own pattern I don't know if it will hold it hold the weight or not but I'm sure that it will because we have been crimping for a long time and I'm using the beadlon crimp to be on the safer side so over here on the side I will say if I need four four inches which will put me to 20 inches total so which I need four four inches then I need uh, two inches for crimping say like one plus one two so totally I need ten more inches uh, so I will cut that wire first um, um, let's do this first before we do that um, we can actually finish the center part yes I think I I will finish the center part then I will have much more time to think about all of these so that's four inches so I need more um, about say 5.5 .5 inches or so right so I will leave this So here is what it is so I will leave about say 5.5 .5 inches here okay and over here I will do the same I'll cut my wire take a bead stopper and put it over here so this is done for us now for now and then take another strand I am taking here um, point zero one two inch strand of beading wire it's a seven strand beading wire and um, you can see here it's a satin gold color and it's speed on and then what I'm, I did was I strung the entire thing, the rest of the beads in the same fashion. As you can see here. I need one more bead. Per se. There we go. So I... Um, put these beads in such a fashion I'm gonna have three strands and I put these and strung these beads in such a fashion the center one is uh, the center it's lighter and it goes darker on either side um, I have to cut this when I cut this you guys will have a clear idea but before that I want to show you guys so this is going to be one strand this is going to be the other strand so if I keep it like this this is how it should be okay first we will keep this and if I have this here okay now what I'm going to do here is just going to figure I'm just 
making sure because once I cut this wire I won't be able to you know do a lot more stuff here so I'm just checking whether I need more length less length stuff like that So I keep this here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this wire just in case more bead stoppers is what I need. So I have a copper bead at the end of every um, strand, so I'm going to add that, okay, and then I'm just going to cut this, um, put the bead stopper here. gonna cut this here then I'm gonna put it like like this and see if it is a little bit more or so okay and then take the last strand and see if this fits in the middle This kind of fits in the middle. So what I'm going to do is just going to take my bead stopper here and keep this strand here. Take the strand and see if it goes properly. Yes, which it does go properly so what I'm going to do is take this strand okay and then move everything out right here so we need everything on this side of the wire so the first one is the first one towards our cornelian bead is a copper spacer the next one is a crimp bead right so hold on one sec I just need to make sure if this is right we have to make sure this is also right because we have to crimp only once you won't be able to do that twice see this this is a little bit short this will not work let me just put this away and try this I'll just take one garnelian bead away and then I am ready to do it. So I will take this guy right here. Take these two strands. Put a stopper over there otherwise this is going to go out. Take these two strands make sure it's the same height move all the beads off of the pattern take the crimp tube insert these two cords or wire into the crimp tube making sure everything is proper you can take your 
crimping pliers I'm gonna use my crimping pliers because I always have success with crimp bead with the crimping pliers rather than the flat nose pliers I go to the second rivet and then press it like that and then go to the first rivet and press it like this and try moving it it's really nice and secure and you don't have to cut this off you can actually put it this through these beads let's see if we can maybe it doesn't go let's see we can cut this off close to the crimp tube these two wires which we added later okay now everything is over there just push everything towards that side and now so this is not going to be proper it is going to be up and down only so now I can cut this as well about say here let me just put the light so here it is if you can see this I have crimped it here and then we have three beads here so just make sure everything goes on the side here is my crimp tube just bring everything together and this will be hidden under this uh, spacer bead okay and then we will see only this so now I am keeping everything together and seeing if it fits properly okay which it does so I just don't want it to be adjacent together but it's a little bit adjacent is all I'm expecting so I'm just going to take the stopper bead off okay and now move everything to the side and make sure the crimp bead comes down the spacer bead goes up there we go just push this because this is the main strand the main strand is up there so I just push everything down and take these two and go through just the crumb tube or the crumb bead insert it through I know it's a little bit long but it's okay just don't want it to be very less and just in case if I had to add some more beads okay this part is done okay this part is the one which is uh, which should be really stable and it's done per se once we crimp this okay this part we cannot change so you need to uh, see if the arrangement here or how it looks on top of each other you like it or not I really like it I go ahead and crimp it as I said I'm using the crimping pliers I'm using the second divot to actually and then I use the first divot like this you have to change the position like this and crimp it now it looks like a bead and these two cords we can snip it off because the main cord is a thicker one we are using and then now this part is done so we need to take care of the rest of the part I really like the design how it turned out to be and we need to finish the uh, length but this center part is done and the crimp bead is inside this large spacer whichever spacer you have uh, in your uh, stash you can use them to actually cover all the crimp tubes or you can put a crimp cover that is also totally fine but I really like this way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now take one uh, stopper at one end of my necklace and then push everything I mean this it so now I'm just going to use the not this one the swoolly bead and 
the Hishi bead. This is the swirly beads that we got. And this is the Hishi beads that we got. I'm going to drum some. And also, um, I can use this copper bead, uh, spacer bead as well. So after this, I'm going to add a copper bead and a Hishi bead. A copper bead and the swirl bead. I really like how this pattern is coming out. I hope you guys like it. So you can substitute this spacer bead with um, um, seed beads as well. The 11 seed beads that you have available. I'm sure everybody will have it. You can use that as well. I really like this copper color. It's um, the metallic um, color adds a very really nice touch to this necklace and also I, we have it in the center uh, which is the focal so I mean there is multiple focals in this uh, necklace if you think about it you have this part of the necklace on either side which is also a focal plus the center carnelian gemstones is also so it's a really I really like it I was looking at this box for quite a long time trust me like I took a couple of days actually I was going back and forth to the box and deciding what I shall do differently I don't want to repeat whatever I did before and um, even though I really like those designs a lot but I just want to do something different with this box um, not the one that I repeat her I mean I did it before and I don't want to do macrame also because I don't want you guys to get tired of macrame even though that's a very very yeah, good thing like in everything in anything and everything you can add macrame I mean it doesn't have to be the entire stretch but even in this side you can do macrame and finish this necklace off but I really like this um, this hishi beads the shape of the hishi bead uh, that's uh, what it's called right I really like the shape and um, I'm looking forward to work with a lot more hishi and the hishi beads separated by this uh, roundel like no it's um, yeah it's glass world roundel lavender amethyst luster it's um, so pretty darn cute so I'm thinking of doing live but I haven't decided the rate yet let me know in the comments below if you guys would I mean I want to do one live a week so let me know which day is a um, good day for you guys either Friday Saturday which day is good for you guys so that I can be consistent with my life I don't want to continue um, just um, doing videos I just want to do some live so that I can share with you guys whatever comes across to my mind when I'm designing the project as well even though I have here for example it took pretty pretty much some time to figure this pattern out but it was um, trial and error when I put together the beads I want to show you guys each and everything that I do so I would like to do live so that I can capture everything that I'm doing so I think this should be good enough this is long enough for the necklace and I really like how the way it turned out to be so add one of the the last is the hishi bead and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a clasp 
we are going to add a copper clasp because there is a lot of focals in this necklace i just want to add a simple copper clasp which is um, lobster claw So for the other side, I want to add this decorated closed jump ring because I feel that to be safer. We have a very really nice tiro cast uh, toggle clasp that came with this um, uh, box, Sam's bead box, but I don't want to use that. I just want to use. Um, this because there's a as I said there's a lot of focal here right so I want all the attention to be in the front and thus that Tirka's toggle is too good to be um, had it in the back to to add it in the back I want to add that in the front so that necklace will be coming up soon I'm gonna design one more with a toggle in the front or maybe yeah I think so that's what I will do and then I added a crimp tube or crimpy and then I'm gonna add my toggle sorry lobster claw and then come back through the crimp bead and if possible through the roundel as well so take my pliers and then make this nice and tight and now is the time to check everything is in order and you haven't missed anything or so everything looks good so now pull this up and then also so now I'm going to show you guys the crimping technique with the crimping pliers okay so here it is I'm going to take my crimp pliers and there is two divots here the innermost one that's the first one I will use and then I'll go ahead and place the bead right in between and then press it that will make it like a bean shape okay and then I go so now I did it like this I went from here in a horizontal fashion now I will do a vertical fashion in the first divot the first uh, circle so I keep the bead like this and keep it inside the first of it and press it that will make it nice and rounded and we have this excess wire which we are going to snip it off with our wire cutters as close as possible and that's nicely done now what I'm going to do is I'm going to string the other side and then finish off the same pattern I will do it here too and then I will finish it off with another, another crimp bead and this um, ring <laughs> 